where it's uh, just using knife cuts, scallops, and uh, and you can see as the uh, paint wears off, those scallops become more prominent. Um, so we can move on. We we've got to catch up here. I'll talk about the next one. Yeah, you can see the inside of the elbow. You can see the hole. So this one could either be, you could drink from the rim of this elbow and they would pass it around, or you could pour uh, ale from it into another bowl. And Phil, earlier we were we were speculating a little bit about the paint on, on these, and did we decide milk paint or something else? Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think this is milk paint. It sure looks like milk paint to me. Casein, uh, very easy to get a hold of to make. So let's try the next one. And you can see that the it's, it's basically a stylized beak on it. And you can see that it, it's kind of a stylized bird's tail as well. That's what I see in it. Um, Is that shown can you up still next one? Yeah. Can, okay. Yeah, I don't see it, but I think it's, isn't it the big, the great big elbow with it's painted? Yes. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so, you know, most of the elbows were turned. Most of the elbows that were used were turned, and um, and a lot of them were painted, of course. A lot of the el the other elbows were painted, but I should talk a little bit about the prominence of the elbow in the uh, home. So these Farmers, we're talking about farmers, and 90% of everybody in Norway uh, were farmers, of course, um, up until the 20th century, um, 21st century. And these were exceedingly poor people, and, um, and they were illiterate. They didn't really start to have schools in Norway until 1861. So um, they were illiterate, and... Um, so then that means they couldn't understand the writing. Um, they couldn't read or write. Um, so it was the forms and the elbows that, that, that spoke the message to them. And um, this one here is painted. Uh, you think about this uh, elbow uh, when you look down into it, and maybe you were dipping out of it. As the ale got weaker and weaker, you could, or was less and less of it, you could see this mystical um, painting coming through the bottom of the elbow. You know, this they were drinking ale uh, because of the alcohol. I mean, they were, you know, they were feeling the effects of the alcohol as well. Go ahead. I don't, can we bring up another one, Josh? Yeah, this is the, another elbow made out of a burl. Um, I really like the form of this. This is about maybe eight, nine inches long, something like that. Um, wasn't it made in the 1700s, uh, Jennifer? Yeah, so some, somewhere between about 1750 and 1770, yes. Yeah, so this is a very well-used elbow. Again, this one has a spout on it, uh, not a real decora decorated spout, and there's no decoration on the bowl other than the form, but the form is really interesting. Uh, remember that uh, elbows are supposed to be comfortable in your hands, so when you're carrying them around, they should be really comfortable. This this elbow seems very comfortable. It's very practical. I could uh, uh, imagine drinking from this elbow. It's got a really very thin uh, rim, and uh, and then again, you could pour from this elbow, made from a burl, natural wood, birch, I'm sure. We can try the next one. Yeah, and that's, you can see the, uh, from the top view, you can see all the uh, contorted wood, the burl part of it. It looks like it's been burned, uh, possibly. Uh, you know, this, just think of all the generations and uh, who use this elbow. Lots of times the elbows sat prominently in the farm uh, farmer's home. So when you came to that home, this is the Changa. This would sit prominently in, in the farmer's home. And um, uh, now I lost my video again, but it'll come back. 
so this is a chenga. It's made for, on the west coast of Norway, uh, from like Hardanger north to Vos. Um, nearly all the ale bowls in that region uh, had this double-headed uh, horse heads. They're stylized horse heads. Uh, this one, of course, is painted. It's got several repairs to it. Uh, look at the very thin nature of that bowl and how nicely formed it is. So this had to have been hand-formed. I don't know how you could... Perhaps you could put that on a, on a lathe and form some of the uh, bottom of it, but it's uh, it's got it's very graceful lines. You know, this would have sat in somebody's home for uh, dec uh, generations, uh, decades, and centuries. Uh, the people in the Norway in the farms um, were transient, but the furniture and the furnishings of the farmhouses stayed the same in Norway. This is another Changna. Uh, again, a very, it took a really uh, skilled craftsperson to make this with making those, uh, the edges of the elbow so thin and the lines are exquisite. You can see some writing on the elbow, uh, but oftentimes they had to have somebody tell them what to write there because they had no idea what, uh, what letters and, and, uh, numbers had meant because they were illiterate. Um, many of these, uh, there's many of these styles of elbows with the uh, double horse heads. Now this is one with a, with a more realistic horse head, very realistic horse head. Um, again, a very nice form, easy to hold. There's a man holding, got his hands in the mouth of the stallion. Uh, whenever you see a, a an elbow or a form with a horse head such as this and the, and the big raised neck, uh, that tells you it's a stallion. And um, as I said, they were illiterate, but but these messages of these stallions of the stallion, uh, you know, I have fjord horses on my farm here, and uh, in the spring, in breeding season. That stallion gets uh, really uh, intense with the, the way it holds its neck and so forth. And so when you see that uh, image, it, it, people read that as uh, excitement, you know, um, because these stallions are really impressive. And we see them on, we don't see them only on elbows, but we see them on mangle boards as well. Uh, has the same idea. So when you're when you have a baptism, um, Christmas, all these celebrations, uh, a lot of the symbols had to do with fertility, and um, either fertility or protection. And, uh, and so when you see this stallion on an elbow or something, it immediately comes to mind about fertility. They, they needed fertility um, for their uh, grain to grow. They needed fertility for their horses to have foals. They needed fertility for their lambs to have, uh, for, for their ewes to have lambs. And of course, fertility meant that um, the mothers would have the children and, um, and the farm would carry on. It also shows some machoism with this man having his hands in the mouth of that stallion. This is an elbow. I believe Becca Hanna made this elbow as a result of the um, classes that were, have been uh, done at uh, Westerheim. And uh, it's a very nice, she's got that very, a really nice thin rim on that. Um, oftentimes, um, it's geometric uh, ornamentation, as this one is. Um, whenever I see that cross hatching on the uh, body of the elbow, that brings to mind uh, the protection symbols. Um, very nice, 
nice lines. This is another ale bowl that a, a real old one. This one was a, a, another one from 1700s, right, Jennifer? Yep. So, yep, 1770. Yeah. So here we see the stallion over the U. So this is gender uh, based as well. So we have a male a stallion over a female um, sheep. Um, you can see the many different colors of the ale bowl. Uh, you know, if they had blue paint, red paint, uh, white paint, white paint came later. So it's not surprising to see the white over the top of the other colors. Um, they refurbished these things from time to time when, when different paints became available. Um, again, the rim, lots of times they had that, uh, the rim was, was specially formed. Of course, that's where you're going to put your lips uh, to sip the beer. And uh, yeah, uh, this is a inspiring elbow. Another horse-headed ale bull. This one doesn't have the big arch in the neck, but again, along the same lines with the, the rim being formed, uh, a facet. Uh, this one, of course, is painted. This is an old one. This is another 1700 bull, something like that. Well, the, the painted date is 1807, but you know, Phil, that the paint sometimes comes later than the actual bull, so um, it's, it could be right. much earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I see the 1807. And lots of times these elbows had inscription uh, written on them, um, kind of smart aleck type uh, inscriptions. Uh, you know, they're like, uh, don't drink too much because you'll get embarrassed or, or drink a whole bunch and have fun or, you know, kind of along those lines. But uh, yeah, this, this uh, one they, says drink and be steady. <laughs> Drink and, drink and be steady. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so they're catchy. But, but you know, the, the way I look at it is, so this was, you know, I, I, I never forget that this was a symbol of a farm. So over generations, people who came to that farm saw this in, in the same place on that, in that farm building. And then when, when they brought this to the wedding or to the celebrations, it was like bringing a piece of their farm to that celebration. And, uh, uh, so the continuity um, of folk art over those years, um, to me, is uh, what's impressive. And, and it's also important that we are also beginning to, as the traditions change, as times change, there is still continuity. What, what uh, I'm really happy uh, to experience is that there's still continuity and that Vesterheim is carrying this on and that, that there are people interested in ale bowls um even now as we're doing a lot of craft beer um craft beer is is back in vogue of course this was all craft beer um and to me there's uh, that's uh, encouraging very nice lines on that one this is one that was made um so all the ale bowls that we've seen so far were made from uh wood this is one done by Gina and Lucy Tolkheim from Dawson, Minnesota. Uh, they were featured in that first slide that we saw where we were drinking um, ale bowl at uh, Marion, in honor of Marion Nelson. And Gina and Lucy studied in Norway and they decided to make ale bowls from um, ceramics, pottery, um, using many of the same lines. Many of her, of uh, uh, Lucy's ale bowls are also carved. <clears throat> with geometric shapes. This is one of my favorite ale bowls. Um, silver. Uh, this was like in the 1900s. Is that correct, Jennifer? Yep, so it dates somewhere between uh, 1917 and 1920. Yeah, so this was right at the end of uh, Art Nouveau, uh, Jogen Steel, um, the Arts and Crafts period of Norway. Uh, this is one of the periods that um, I just love. Uh, uh, again, you can see the stylized uh, stallion horse head with the neck. Um, so ale bowls were made out of, you know, different material. Um, 
This one happens to be engraved. Uh, again, a lot of the same forms, uh, that rim with the facet on it, um, some rope work. Um, you know, just a, this one's inspired me. Every time I go to Vestheim, I like to look at this one and see what I can see, something new. This is one of the ale bowls um, I made some years ago, and I forgot to mention that uh, oftentimes the uh, heads on the ale bowls um, were uh, proportionately small. And, uh, and this is something that uh, Harald Kolstad uh, pointed out to us, who, is, uh, who taught ale bowls, came from Norway and taught ale bowl classes at Vesterheim. Um, and for me, it was much easier to make big heads on the ale bowls than to make them small. And I decided that this time I was going to make a small head on this ale bowl. And that, that was the goal. I tried to get the arch to it. Um, sometimes my ale bowls aren't as uh, refined now that I look at these other ale bowls. Um, and mine aren't always practical. Uh, I think about vases and vases. You know, sometimes my elbows are more like a vase. They're they're not really meant to be. The first thing isn't for them to be uh, used as a drinking vessel, but to be a centerpiece on a table, for example. Um, here I decorate it with acanthus and and with strong colors. Yeah, the, the, this next one is a really interesting elbow. I just don't know. It just points to the fact that there is a huge variation in ale bowls. So think about all the farms that were in Norway, um, and nearly all of them had ale bowls, um, especially in the folk art places such as the West Coast or in Goodman, Stahl, and Telemark. Um, there was a huge variation. Uh, this one has these really interesting wing forms uh, coming out on the top. You can see the heart there. You can see the diamond uh, below on the other side. Uh, and, and then, of course, that, uh, what is it, a six-sided star. And whenever I see stars like that, um, that symbolism meant something to the people who made this, designed this ale bowl. Again, they were illiterate. So what they, it was forms and, and um, shapes that uh, told the stories. Uh, because they couldn't write and read and write. Um, here's one <clears throat> that I made. Uh, I got carried away on the head. I like to do dragons. So it's, you know, in Americans, that's, we, we can be fairly excessive sometimes. And, um, and that was a story with this one. I wanted it to be in the shape of a boat. So you can see that some rocker on the keel there. And, uh, and then a little bit over the top with a decoration, perhaps. Natural wood, basswood. A couple of slides from the um, classes at Vesterheim. <clears throat> Becky Lusk teaches, there's been carvers, um, Torger Lierhus from Norway. Uh, I know Rebecca Hanna teaches uh, elbows. Um, I've taught some, and uh, this is a great way to learn the traditions, uh, learn the techniques, um, and, this, and, and, and begin to study uh, style and ornamentation um, techniques for ornamenting these ale bowls. This is an ale bowl that um, I think it, what's the story, Jennifer? Who, where did it come from? It's a modern ale bowl. Yeah, it, uh, it is, and uh, it's carved by uh, Bjarne um, Lierhus. So, came from Norway, but uh, we don't have much information about it. The donor didn't, uh, the donor acquired it, purchased it, but didn't really know anything about it. So, Harald Kolstad was the person who really started to revive elbow carving in Norway. Um, and again, I, he, he, he taught at Vesterheim. I took, we took a class from him. This sure looks like one of the replica elbows that he uh, taught. And, uh, but then there's a lot of variations in the way you can orna ornament the elbows. 
and uh, and this is both the paint job and uh, the ornamentation with the the wings and so forth is uh, is really interesting, and uh, you know that's what it's about self expression, and uh, and this one shows it. Uh, in spades. This one has a, a chicken head. There were a lot of the ale bowls had chicken heads um, or waterfall heads. If they had waterfall heads, they were supposed to be floating in the um, the larger bowls. The chickens, you know, not so much. This is another one. Uh, this is one that I made. It was from the research uh, trip that I had in 1994, and I think I was uh, thinking about that painting streak. Um, and uh, and so I wanted a provocative elbow with a great big eye on it. And uh, Marion used this one in the Migration of a Tradition, the book that he did, the study he did. Another elbow that I did uh, more recently, with uh, it's got a horse head. Um, some of them I, in this form, I make with um, dragon heads, but uh, this is in a more of a dragon style from the Art Nouveau period, uh, the revival, and uh, experimenting with paint colors and so forth to to make them bright. So all the elbows that we saw previously at one time were really bright. And uh, as the paint wore off, um, you know, they got older and older looking, and sometimes they renewed the paint with bright paint. Uh, but w we do know that uh, they appreciate the fact that it was bright colors. This is the last slide. This was a slide taken on the rock again. Uh, out in front of our house. This was on our at our son's wedding. Um, Gina, Lucy, Tolkien, Fred, Kajalo, and Doris Kajalo, and on um, Norma Rafsol, uh, dressed up in bunads and using the ale bowls as uh, as they were meant to be used at weddings. Yep, and thank, thanks everybody for joining us today. It's so good to see so many of you and I hope that I'll see you at Westerheim sometime soon. Thank you all. Thank you.